Let's have a look at the Flow EFD interface. Flow EFD uses an OEM version of SOLIDWORKS which allows building parts and assemblies quickly and efficiently. Note that Flow EFD is also available as a fully embedded software within a Pro Engineer and a CATIA environment. Other native CAD data, such as Inventor or Solid Edge files, can be easily read and used in Flow EFD. Getting back to our coal plate analysis, you can see on the screen that all the parts needed for the model definition are already in place. The water duct, the heating rods, and the copper plate. So, how do we take advantage of this existing CAD geometry and define a flow and heat transfer simulation? First, we will run the wizard. The wizard is a great way to define the overall boundary conditions of the problem and get it ready for the flow and heat transfer analysis. The wizard helps navigate through various required steps. The first step is a name for the configuration that you are defining. Let's name this configuration first run and add a brief description of the project. Since FlowEFD runs from within a SOLIDWORKS environment, this project will create a new configuration for the current assembly. Next, FlowEFD will ask us about the unit system that we would like to use. For this model, we will set the pressure in PSI, the temperature in degrees Celsius, and the volume flow rate in gallons per minute. Keep in mind that even after finishing the wizard, you can change and customize the system of units at any time. Next, we will need to specify the type of analysis that we would like to run. For this heat transfer problem, we will choose internal since we are only interested in looking at results within the coal plate. If the goal was to include external convection, then we would choose external. Exclude cavities without flow conditions is a smart way for flow EFD to filter any unnecessary gaps which could be part of the CAD geometry. Heat conduction also needs to be included for the simulation. Note that radiation and gravity effects will be ignored at this point, but could be considered if needed. The following wizard choice is for the fluid properties. Flow EFD comes with a pre-populated engineering database, which makes it quite easy to select a fluid. Let's select water. All the physical properties, such as density, viscosity, specific heat, and thermal conductivity, are already defined. Since heat conduction will be calculated, Flow EFD needs to attach a default material property to the geometry. We will attach aluminum to this project. Later, I will show you how to override this property for some of the elements like the copper plate. Next, we'll need to address how the solids interact with the outside world. Basically, do we want to consider some convection out of the solid surfaces using a fixed heat transfer coefficient? Or do we want to be conservative and force the heat to be dissipated only by the water? We'll choose the latest and set the external walls to be adiabatic. Before we get into the mesh definition, we'll set up the initial conditions. These are very important to define, especially if you're doing a time-dependent solution. For a cold plate, we'll assume that the default conditions are appropriate for the analysis. Finally, the wizard will help us select a mesh resolution. As you see, the default setting is 3. For the cold plate simulation, we'll select a level of 5, which will help refine the mesh in areas of interest, such as the water duct and the heated rods. To ensure even more refinement, we'll select a minimum gap size and wall thickness of 4 mm. These values will help the measure identify the smallest dimensions that need to be captured for the analysis and create the corresponding grid. Once the wizard closes, you will see black lines show up on the screen. These lines follow the boundaries of the computational domain. That's a quick way to verify that Flow EFD recognizes the actual fluid and solid volumes that need to be analyzed. Before adding any more boundary conditions to the model, let's visualize the automatically generated fluid domain. This can be easily done from the Check Geometry menu by creating a three-dimensional view of the fluid regions. As you can see, the water channel is captured appropriately. 
Now that we feel confident about the fluid and solid volume definitions, let's finish the model setup. So far, the coal plate and the other elements are made of aluminum. Let's make sure that we attach the appropriate materials. For example, the plate itself is made of copper. To attach copper to the plate, we'll get back into the engineering database and choose copper from there. As you can see, all the physical properties of copper, such as density, specific heat, and thermal conductivity, are defined. Note that you can also create your own material library from within the engineering database. The same approach is used to define the steel rods and insulate the lids. The lid solid geometry is here to set the water flow conditions and should not be considered for heat transfer calculations. To wrap up the heat transfer boundary conditions, the power dissipation of the rods needs to be defined. It can be easily done by selecting all the rods at once and apply 60 watts, since each rod is the same volume and dissipates 20 watts. We now need to focus on the water flow conditions. To set up the inlet flow condition, let's zoom in on the inlet lid and select the inner face of the lid, since that's the face that is in contact with the fluid. Once selected, we'll be able to apply a volume flow rate of 0.2 gallon per minute. The default pressure and temperature settings of 14.6 psi and 20 degrees Celsius are applied to the inlet. Note that they could be changed if they were different from the initial conditions. Once the inlet flow boundary condition is applied, Flow EFD highlights the flow direction in the display area using red arrows. Similarly, the inner face of the exit lid is used to define the exit flow boundary condition. In this case, the pressure is set to the default value of 14.69 psi. The exit temperature will be computed and available as an output variable once the solution is finished. So, how can we set that up in Flow EFD? That's where goals come into pictures. Goals help the user do results analysis in a very efficient way. Goals are also used by the solver to speed up convergence. To monitor the water exit temperature, we will create a surface goal. As you can see, output variables can be reported on a point, a surface, or a volume. Equations can also be set up. An example of an equation goal would be if you would like to report a temperature difference. To check on pressure drop through the duct, we will define a surface goal at the inlet. Finally, we can select the rods in order to monitor the maximum temperature. The case is now ready to solve. Let's have a look at the solver options. An important feature is to be able to run the solver in the background and, while it is solving, being able to work on another Flow EFD model. This can be done by running the solver as standalone. As you can see, Flow EFD can also take advantage of multi-core or multi-processor speed to reduce the solution time. Let's start the solver so that you can see how Flow EFD generates the mesh and the results. Flow EFD uses an octree-based mesh which generates fluid, solid, and partial cells. The partial cells are cells that get divided between the fluid and the solid to better match the geometry. Flow EFD powerful rectangular adaptive meshing approach is a core strength of the software and can be transparent to the user if desired, but it is not limited to being a black box approach. Optionally, advanced users have full access to the meshing controls for fine tuning. During the run, the engineer can get real-time feedback about its progress by looking at the goal values. You can also preview a control plot, such as the temperature distribution for the coal plate at the center of the steel rods, which gives you a good sense of how the solution is developing. Once the goals converged, the solver will automatically stop. This model takes about 20 minutes to solve on a 32-bit, 2 gigabytes of RAM dual-core processor machine. The solver window can now be closed and the results are automatically loaded to begin post-processing.
We can start the pulse processing by looking at the temperature distribution in the core plate. To do so, let's create a pot cutting through the top. In this case, we will be able to visualize the temperature distribution within the solids, like the plate, as well as in the fluid, in some parts of the water duct. We can also play with the plot location so that we can visualize the temperature distribution through various sections of the coal plate. Currently, the temperature gradient displayed is between the minimum and the maximum values found within the entire model. This must mean that a rod heats up to 24 degrees Celsius. You can also display the temperature distribution within the water only. In this case, the maximum temperature drops down to 22.7 degrees Celsius. A similar plot can be done for the solid temperature gradient. Keep in mind that this plot can be annotated with temperature values at various locations, which could help highlight problematic areas. This view can then be exported as an image file to be included into a report or presentation. Another variable that they wanted to analyze is the pressure. It would be nice to see the pressure gradient within the water duct. A great way to display pressure is by using a surface plot on the inside walls of the duct. As you can see, there is a pressure drop of about 0.6 psi between the inlet and the exit. So far, we only looked at three-dimensional or surface plotted results. How can we get a 3D view of the flow through the duct? That's where flow trajectories come into picture. Let's track the water movement from the inlet of the duct. Setting up the number of trajectories defines the number of streamlines that we would like to display. Changing the shape of the trajectories to arrows helps visualize the flow direction. Finally, we chose to color the streamlines by temperature in order to see how the water warms up from inlet to exit. Since the duct is fairly long and narrow, it makes it hard to view the water flow. Let's zoom in on the exit section of the duct to get a closer look. The streamlines can be displayed as static or can be animated. Animating the flow is an efficient way to understand the dynamics of the fluid. It could, for example, emphasize the flow separation region. Note that these animations can be exported as video files. So EFD can also extract heat transfer rate, temperature, and pressure out of surfaces and volumes. For example, let's select the rod showing on the screen. When a volume parameter is created, it will report the minimum and maximum temperature for this volume. A maximum temperature of 24 degrees Celsius is reported for the rod, which is consistent with the cut plot value that we showed earlier. The reported data can be exported directly to Excel. Finally, if you recall when we defined the model boundary conditions, we set up some goals such as the water temperature at the exit and the maximum rod temperatures. Since these goals were nicely predefined, they can be easily reported into an Excel spreadsheet. We can then read that the water temperature at the exit of the duct is 21.2 degrees Celsius, which is about 1.2 degrees Celsius higher than the inlet water temperature. Flow EFD also creates a plot for each goal versus the number of iterations, which shows when the goal reached its stabilized value. Flow EFD also offers an integration with Microsoft Word for an automatic report generation. The report gets created from a predefined template and summarizes all the model input data, such as the computer on which the model was run, the boundary conditions, the solve time, and finally, the results with the goals value. Furthermore, any plot created earlier can be added on the fly to the report. This is a great way to share results with customers. The analysis of the call plate is now finished. Let's assume that we would like to make changes to the model. For example, we would like to modify the power generated by the rods or the water inlet volume flow rate. We could also be interested in changing the coal plate geometry. In Flow EFD, you can easily make a copy of an existing project by using the Clone Project option. A new configuration gets generated within the CAD environment and all the Flow EFD settings are copied over for a new analysis. Then, you could edit the rod power dissipation and enter a new value. 
all the project configurations get saved in the Configuration Manager. This concludes the Coal Plate Analysis presentation. This demonstration focuses on the FlowEFD standalone software, but keep in mind that FlowEFD is also available as a fully embedded software within ProEngineer and Katia. Thank you very much for your interest in FlowEFD.